Dumnezeu. All this imagery data that NASA and other folks are generating allow us to really uh, predict things on large scales. In order to do that, you need to have some calibration data. Right? So that's what we're doing. I'm a forest ecologist, but I try to integrate things. My specialty has primarily been the functioning of plants, so how plants interact with the environment. Most of the work I've done is try to answer basic questions about how forests are functioning and what we can learn by measuring the physiology and anatomy of the species in those forests. Through talking with some colleagues about new developments and remote sensing and imagery that was being taken from space and airplanes, I became interested in this type of data and I realized that there was probably a really nice opportunity to integrate imagery taken from space with a lot of the genetic information that we are collecting in forests. And so I wrote a proposal on my couch and received funding from NASA to, to um, to fund this work and integrate spectral imagery with genomics. Yeah, at Onderk, we pick 15 different plots randomly, avoiding bugs. Each of these 15 plots have nine trees that are being sampled. When we go to the field, we try to get at least five of those plots per day, so it takes about three days to complete the whole census. So we go to the forest uh, in the morning and we start collecting leaves from different trees, from different species. And so Nate clips the tree and then I get leaves. I pick the best three leaves, the ones that are, don't have any damage or disease. And then I roll them and I put them in a vial that go to liquid nitrogen because we need them for the RNA. I take another sample to bring to the lab to measure the spectral signature of that, those leaves. A lot of our work previously in these forests and forests on the East Coast is focused on how tree species uh, from here respond to drought. Uh, so we've taken, we're taking that kind of background information, what we know about how these trees respond to drought under really tightly controlled experiments or in field observations, and trying to link that to imagery to see if we can build spatial models of how genes are expressing across the landscape and whether those signatures of expression align with what we know, how the plants behave under drought experimentally. Our hope is that because imagery is continuously being recorded from, from space or from planes, that if we can build successfully build models of how genes are being expressed in really large expanses, so several thousand acres. So could you build models that are continuously updated using the information we're producing here, telling you how the trees are genomically responding to water levels so that you could produce maps of different parts of the forest and saying, this clearly is giving off a genetic signature that this forest is under stress. And of course, these things like drought stress are linked to the probability of having large wildfires uh, and other um, major impacts on forest health and atmospheric composition, all of these things. What makes UNDER perfect for doing this is that we have outstanding lab facilities, right? So it's hard to be this far up in the North Woods have all the facilities that you need to go out, collect leaves, freeze them, and do all the lab work necessary, do the scanning of leaves. All of this is very difficult technically to do, and you really need great research infrastructure to pull it off. This place is fantastic for this research.